the up and coming litter, it's always interesting to try and predict what colors you're gonna get in the puppies. And of course, we chose the stud to go with our girl Phoebe based on the DNA of the two parents because we know what we'd like to try to produce. So let's kind of analyze that so you'll get a feel for this. It's very important that uh, if you're gonna do much of this, that you kind of get a solid understanding of genetics because it's really gonna affect what you're gonna produce and consequently the value of the puppies. All right, so I haven't put every color that's up there in terms of all of the DNA, but here are the significant ones. You know, we've got blue, rojo, which we used to call testable chocolate, cocoa, uh, cream, tan points, brindle pied, fluffy, and moral. Uh, there's other genes like intensity and things like that, but they're not gonna play a part in this. And I don't know whether these dogs have got intensity anyway, so I didn't include them. Okay, so first thing is we chose the stud slice from Andy Pilgrim because of his wonderful structure. He's a really nicely built dog. What we want is a dog that's short back, short neck, shorter tail, shorter tail, um, shorter legs, short, nice muzzle, doesn't have whack and great big ears, big head. He's got all that, he's a really nice dog. He's a full fluffy. All right, bred to our girl Phoebe, also a really nicely structured dog. All right, so let's look and make a prediction. So the first thing is, except for this one here, uh, well, actually this one and this one here as well, which we don't have, all of these require both parents have a copy of it and give it out to get that color expressed. They are what are called recessive genes. So let's start off. Will we get blue dogs? Absolutely, because both dogs carry two copies. Remember, every time that you do a breeding, each dog hands out one of these two genes in a random fashion. So half the time it gives this one and half the time it gives this one. Since they're the same, Slice always gives out the blue gene, Phoebe, also the same situation. So we know with, we'll just put a line here. So this is, this is gonna be the, this is gonna be the puppies. So down below this is the puppies, puppies. We know every single puppy we produce has to be DD. That's a given, there's no other way around it. And I'm gonna handle the easy ones first. We know that every puppy that's produced has to be a, uh, a cocoa dog. So those two together make for a lilac dog. We know at the very least, every puppy that we produce has to be a lilac dog. We know that we are not gonna get any brindles and we're not gonna get any pies because again, neither puppy, ne neither parent carries either the brindle or the pie gene. And interestingly, this brindle gene here is the one that I don't like because a single copy of it anywhere here can produce brindle dogs and that wipes out the tan points. Okay, so, now let's talk about, um, well, let's talk about this one, cream. Well, since Phoebe is a cream dog, every puppy that she produces has to have a copy of cream. And since Slice carries a copy of it, he will hand out the cream gene some of the time, and the rest of the time he will hand out the non-cream gene. So, we know that we are gonna get half the dogs, 50% of the offspring, are gonna be cream. We know that for a fact. Well, no, 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 sorry, that's not right. 50% <laughs> of the dogs are likely to be cream. There is no given in this. This is not, this is like flipping a coin. Will you get a head or a tail? You don't know. 50% of the time you get a head, 50% of the time you throw a tail, but on an individual throw, you don't know. Will it be a head or a tail? It's 50-50. If you throw a coin 100 times, you'll almost always get darn close to 50-50 heads and tails. But we would expect 50% of these dogs to be cream. Since cream covers everything else up, then I'm gonna move this off the side here. 50% of the dogs are, 50% uh, of the dogs are, would be cream. It's gonna co cover up uh, any other colors, including morals and things like that. All right, so these are the cream dogs. These are not cream dogs. Right, so now what else are we gonna get? Well, if you look at a Punnett square on the Rojo gene, We'll just do a little Punnett square right here. We've got BB, big B, little B. What do we get? The only one that shows the, G, the color is the little B, little B. So one quarter 
one quarter are going to be rojos. Okay. The other three quarters are either going to be completely not rojo or have one copy of it. But it will only show, and that's what we're kind of really talking about here, it will only show in those dogs that get two copies. So it's going to be a bit confusing here how we're going to do this. But basically what we're going to get here is either we're going to get one quarter rojo and three quarters not. Okay. Um, and I put that in the wrong place because I'm an idiot. Let's put it in the right place. So we've got one quarter rojo and three quarters not rojo. ATA, similar situation. Now, an ATA dog or an ATAT dog produce 10 points. So on this one, Punnett's great again, ATA bred to a, <laughs> drop my square right, <laughs> sorry. Okay, bred to an ATA, you're going to get ATATs. Oh, I'm having a hard time today. Sorry, I haven't had enough coffee. ATATs, 10 points. ATAs, 10 points. ATAs, 10 points. AAs, double recessive, not 10 points, solid colors. So, three quarters of the dogs are going to show 10 points. So, three quarters will have 10 points. 10 points. And one quarter will be solid colors. All right, uh, Brindle, Brindle, no, no, we know that already. Fluffy, he gives out a Fluffy gene every time, she gives it out half the time, so we're gonna get one half Fluffy and one half carriers, Fluffy carriers. The moral gene, it's a recessive, it's a, excuse me, it's a dominant gene, a single copy shows up by the way, you never want to have a double moral dog because it's likely to be deaf and blind. So you just don't breed morals to morals for that reason. So we're breeding a moral dog to a non moral dog. We're going to get half morals and half not. So there it all is. Now the question is how does this all fall together? So look, what we'd love to breed, what we'd love to produce would be a full fluffy new shade. That would be a dog that is, um, that is a dog that's got, that gets the moral. Well, we'd like to produce a full fluffy new shade moral. That's what we'd love to produce. What are the chances of that happening? Half the dogs are moral. Half the dogs are fluffy. I'm not going to worry about tan points because that's not, although that does make a difference, it's not really the fundamental thing that I'm after. Um, I would like to, uh, all the dogs be uh, one quarter of the dogs are going to be Rojo. So you've got to multiply this all together and that gives you the possibility of producing a new shade, full fluffy moral. Half by half is a quarter and a quarter by a quarter is a one sixteenth. One sixteenth of the dogs are going to be what we'd like to have. And... I'd like to have a female of that. Half of them would be females and half won't. So then the number of females that you'd expect to get is one in 32. Not very good odds. Well, are we going to get that? We could. It could happen. The gods might be shining on us the day that we have the C-section here in a couple of days. But the chances of it happening, are, unfortunately, are pretty bloody slim. So not likely, but possible. What we do know, what we do know is we're going to get all lilacs of which half of them will be platinums because they will be D, D, C, O, C, O, little E, little E. So half will be lilacs, half will be platinums. They'll all carry cream and half of them will be fluffies and half of them will be morals. So you can play the whole game. Like, like, would, let's play the game. What's the chance of getting a platinum fluffy out of this? Well, every dog gets C, O, and D, D. That's a lilac. Half of them get the cream that makes a platinum. So half will be platinums of which half will be morals. So one quarter would be platinum morals. And guess what? You won't see the moral because the cream covers up. So we could get some cream. We're likely to get some cream dogs in this litter. In fact, we'd expect to get half of them cream dogs. And uh, 
we're having a prediction, Tammy and I. She thinks there's five dogs, I think there's six inside her. So if we go with my four, it makes, excuse me, I think there's four dogs, Tammy thinks there's five. If you go with my prediction of four dogs, it makes the math a little bit easier. I expect to get two creams and two dogs that aren't cream, of which probably one will be a moral, one will be a lilac. And one of those creams will probably be a moral cream. So we'll see. But you can see how you do this. It kind of gets, you know, in terms of predicting exactly what you'll get, can get fairly complicated in terms of working out the actual math of what you'd expect to get. So um, I hope this is not too confusing. Um, but there we go. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.